What is up YouTube? Cam888 here and I've been to YCS London last weekend. Uh, it was really great, awesome event and I just wanted to showcase my deck profile for you guys. I'm also going to make a video doing the coverage of the event, what were my matchups and stuff, so definitely check that video out. I'm As soon as it's up I'm going to link it down here in the description as well, so if you see it, go visit my channel for it. Um, on the event itself, I went 5-3 um, in on day one, uh, but I got cheated uh, pretty bad uh, in my final match, uh, which lost me the game uh, because it was word against words. Judges couldn't do anything about it, and um, in my eyes, I should have gone 6-2. So the event was actually pretty good for me. Uh, I was happy with the deck choices that I made, so I'm going to show them right now for you guys. First of all, I was playing Pendulum Magician, so triple Joker. Uh, Joker's awesome, just a straws of the deck. Uh, basically, standard uh, Magician lineup, triple Wisdom Eye, triple Double Iris, uh, triple Black Fang. I really like Black Fang a lot. I see a lot of people cutting it down to two, but there are so many, so many times that I just go through triple Black Fang in one turn, so yeah, you, you have to have it at three, I think. Uh, tri triple Purple Poison Magician, uh, the card is bunker since scale 1 is the most important thing, I guess. Uh, since you have a low amount of low scales, so yeah. Uh, triple Harmonizing Magician, awesome card, just instant exceed or synchro. Uh, one Oath Dragon, uh, because it's Oath Dragon, it's amazing. Um, as long as I don't banish it with Desires, I'm fine with one. If you banish it with Desires, you always ho wished you play the second one, but... Just playing one is fine, I guess. I was only playing one Perform Pal Pendulum Sorcerer. Uh, I didn't feel the need of adding the second one because, like, either you draw it, you search with Duelist Alliance, or you already have the Joker. So you you really don't need to say. Just having a second to draw it more just seemed not not so great for me, and I wasn't actually sad about not playing the second one. So I was really happy. Uh, and then double Astrograph Sorcerer. I also see a lot of people cutting this out of their deck, but Astrograph Sorcerer uh, works under Baguska, so you still get your uh, search, which is pretty awesome. Uh, and also it's a combo extender. You, you can make Deco Talker with this uh, pretty fast and then still go for your plays thanks to the Black Fang Magician, so um, it's really great card. Uh, that's it for the Magician part of the deck. I'm going to put those right here. And then for the hand traps, uh, I was playing Triple Ash Blossom, uh, probably one of the best and most versatile cards of the metagame, I guess. Uh, Ash Blossom, really amazing. I was playing Triple Reaper. Um, after the event, I was, I'm was, i actually contemplating, I'm, I'm probably going to drop one from the main deck, gonna put the third one in the side. But um, <laughs> yeah, in total, the, the Reaper is needed to hit the, the double helix if you see it when you're going second, so yeah. Uh, only two draw and lock. I didn't have access to a third one on the event, so I went on by playing two. And I really wished I had the third one. Draw and lock was so amazing and so prominent. Um, there were games that I really had game because of this card alone, so yeah. Uh, one Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit. Um, I'm going to swap out the third Reaper for a second Ghost Ogre uh, because Ghost Ogre is really amazing. Um, against Spiral Player, um, he I went draw and lock. Um, he still went for his double helix play, so he can su he at least could have summoned the master plan. And I uh, ghost ogre to the double helix, so he couldn't uh, add the card. And because the double helix was gone, he couldn't special summon it as well. So the card actually fizzled out. Uh, ghost ogre is really amazing. It stops the field spell. Everything. It's it's such a good card. And the final uh, hand traps maxi. Uh, nothing to say about that card's bunkers. Uh, that's it for the monsters. It's a pretty high number, um, but the deck's also a pretty high number. I'm playing 46 cards, and I actually only bricked uh, twice during the entire event, so uh, which is an amazing, amazingly good number, I think. So yeah, uh, triple pot of desires for spells. Uh, card is crazy. You you play three of, of most of everything, so you, you can afford the three the three pot of desires. Uh, triple duelist alliance. Uh, card is great, but it isn't perfect in this deck uh, since it's really hard um, to search for 
uh, scale once without trying to get ashed by, uh, on your Pendulum Call. Uh, it's also a thing, I didn't play Pendulum Call just because of... Um, if it gets ashed, you automatically lose, basically. So, um, going first um, with Duelist uh, Alliance, you really didn't want to get ashed. So, I uh, opted not to play the Pendulum Call. Seeing afterwards, I guess I should have run one... Um, I ran this instead, the Amazing Pendulum. Uh, it gets cards back from your extra deck. Um, I haven't seen it all day, and I ended up siding it out most of the time for uh, things like Cosmic Cyclone, so I'm, I probably wouldn't add it back into the deck, because most jewels are, are done in like two turns anyway, so you don't have the room to play this card. Uh, two Star Pendulum Graph, uh, cards bunkers, you want to see it. Um, and if you banish one with the Desires, it isn't bad at all because you can still have one, so yeah. Uh, double time pendulum graph, same as a star pendulum graph, so you really want to see it, so you play two. And then I was maining triple evenly matched. Um, because I had that many hand traps, I was fearing that I bricked a lot, so I tried to go second a lot of times, and because of that I used the evenly matched in the main deck. Um, seeing afterwards, I only drew it once during the entire event, um, no, two times. I drew two times in the entire event and the card wasn't actually that great um, in uh, one of the two options. So um, the first time I used it was against the Pendulum player, uh, so the mirror match, and he just wavering iced his own cards away, so he got, uh, got a surge. Then the uh, evenly matched white his board and he went Astrograph and still got a monster on board, still got some searches, went from there. Um, and I was still in trouble because he had a Baguska, but in general, uh, the card actually works well. I won against an Invoked player because, uh, well, not only because of this card, but it really helped, so yeah. Uh, that's it for the main deck, 46, as I said, it is a lot, but I've already changed the build uh, to my needs for the, for the rest of the format, actually. And it's only 44 now, so I cut some cards. <laughs> Uh, then for the extra deck, uh, Synchros, the Omega, really, really good card. Uh, Alignment Paladin, um, I haven't summoned this all day, uh, mainly because you don't have a lot of spell cards in your deck that you want to recycle. It's good for the uh, for the OTK when you have to, because it's, it's also a dark spellcaster, so you can target uh, with a lot of your uh, magicians, which is good, so that's mostly the reason that it's in here. Uh, Ignister, Bunker's good card and most likely the only out in the deck for Sleeper because the Trap card is more than likely going to be popped before you can uh, use a Sending effect for Sleeper. So you try to lure it out, summon the Sleeper, uh, summon the Ignister and then you can bounce away the Sleeper which is actually your only way of outing it. Uh, Supreme King Dragon uh, Clearwing, the card is Bunker's. I um, My opponent went scapegoat in my turn. In their turn, I used Maxi, so they didn't play because they thought they were safe with all their scapegoats. Just made this and blow them blow them away, so it's really awesome. Uh, Beals with Diabolic Dragons, card is bunkers against a lot of decks, although I haven't made it on the event because I just didn't see it fit. Uh, and then the Ancient Fairy Dragon, uh, one time. Uh, it's mostly in here for a cherry target, which I actually regret. Uh, because hitting Ancient Fairy Dragon isn't that important. You really want to hit the Helix uh, in Spiral. Uh, if they if they play this um, and against any other deck, you you really don't want to hit anything. You, you really don't want to hit the Ancient Fairy. There's always something better to hit. So yeah, um, I did make it once uh, to get rid of the Spiral Field spell, but yeah, something went wrong there, so, <laughs> so um, the Ancient Fairy didn't really help right there, and I had a better play to make, I think. Um, but in any case, I, I'm probably gonna drop the Ancient Fairy, so it wasn't that relevant. Uh, Time Star Magician, uh, Performance Peace Magician, uh, mostly for the OTKs and for uh, Trickster. Uh, Tornado Dragon and Diamond Dire Wolf. I really like Diamond Dire in this deck, uh, just because if you don't have the option, uh, to go for like a deco talker and you you have too many monsters you can just go diamond dire pop pop a card uh, when going second and then you can still make your exceed with the other monsters it's kind of the same as with by making an omega 
Um, you clear your extra monster zone again just by popping out the, the Diamond Dire, so it's a really good card, I think. Uh, one Abyss Dweller, and probably one of the best cards of the format right now, the number 41 Baguska. Um, got cherried once, um, still won that game, um, but in general the Baguska is really a good card and it's way too overpowered against some decks, so you really need to play around this one. Um, Deco Talker, uh, two things, as a cherry target against ABC players, because if they go for Proxy Dragon um, and they have a monster, you can just cherry the Deco Talker and most of the time they don't have an out anymore. Uh, Firewall Dragon. Uh, again, Cherry Target and the Spiral Double Helix as a Cherry Target. Um, I did make the Deco Talker a couple of times, but it doesn't come up that much. Um, in total fairness, I'm probably going to cut that one Ancient Fairy for an uh, Akasic Magician, uh, because it's a really good. There are really good combos uh, by doing so. So yeah. And then for the side deck, uh, probably the most prominent of the event, I was playing Triple Zafion uh, for True Draco, but I didn't face any. Um, the deck is also kind of fizzling out, so I'm probably going to cut the Zafions. Um, but, yeah. Just Spell and Trap Destruction in general is really good, and the Zafions aren't really helping at all. Uh, same for the Denko Sekas. I was playing two, but I didn't face any Chain Burn um, or any or any Palio. And truth be told, you have to focus against things like Spiral, um, evenly matched, stuff like that uh, to put in your sights. It's really important to, to build your sight well. Um, Shadol Dragon, the the thought process about the Dragon was that you can send it with Time Star Magician from your deck and you get to pop another card, but I've sighted in three times and I opened with it three times. So every time I sighted it in to do so, I actually drew the cards in my opening hand, which was very annoying. It's still a level four with 1900 attack, but in general, it isn't doing much at that point, and it doesn't do enough. It's a good card, but it doesn't do enough, even if you get it off. So, yeah, I'm gonna drop this. Uh, then one personal side card that I really loved, um, Kaiku the Ghost Destroyer. I made, I side decked one uh, to combat things like Lightsorn, Zombies, um, and even a little bit against Spiral, because if you summon this, and you can attack... With, with it, you can banish cards from the graveyard uh, monster. So you can banish the drone, you can banish quick fix, you can banish uh, spiral super agent. So they don't get things back and limiting their resources uh, to, to let them summon their sleeper is also really good. But when this on the field, they they can't even summon their sleeper. And because it's a dark spellcaster, you can revive it with Black Fang and you can just prevent the sleeper from coming out, which is actually kind of funny because I did that once. So yeah. ABC Dragon Buster as a cherry target. Um, looking afterwards, I don't think ABC is that big of a problem for this deck, so I'm probably going to cut the Dragon Buster. I'm just going to keep it on the Deco Talker. Um, it's easily done that way. Uh, and then a lot of Spell and Trap Destruction. I went with Triple Cosmic Cyclone. Card's good. Nothing to say about it. was really awesome. Uh, double Mystical Space Typhoon. I was actually surprised this card actually put in so much work. It was awesome every time i drew it it was a great card it was a it was great help it really pulled my deck forward in this um in this event and i saw it at the right time so nothing to say about it and then double heavy storm duster um in theory a good card when going first but looking back to it i'm probably going to swap these up and i'm going to uh side in uh, spell shattering arrows because those actually get rid of the of all your problems in Spiral. Um, the field spell, your uh, their last resort, because if you spell Shattering Arrow, you don't target. So you destroy the last resort and then the sleeper destroys itself and clears the board, which is actually a great combination. Um, so I'm definitely going to try that out over the Heavy Storm Dusters. Uh, that was it for the deck. I hope you liked it. Um, as I said, I went 5-3, but I should have gone 6-2. Uh, they won the... The entire thing with the cheater actually broke my uh, broke everything for me. I just didn't want to go to day two anymore, even to try. So um, it was fun while it lasted, and um, I knew with five three I wouldn't be topping. So yeah, I just went to see London, which was also great. Uh, that's it for the deck profile. I hope you guys liked it. Um, if you have any questions or if you want to see the new deck profile. Um, 
definitely hit me up in the comments. I'll post it then. So yeah, see you guys. Ciao.